This presentation is about exchange rates, whereas inflation looks at the internal value of the pound, exchange rates look at the external value of the pound. I'm going to throw in a bit of a warning almost as soon as we start. We're going to be using terms like stronger or weaker currency, um, and it's something that students sometimes get sort of uh, tripped up on. If a currency is getting stronger, it simply means it's worth more. So if, for example, the value of the pound goes up from 120 to 130, that is a strengthening of the value of the pound. It does not mean that British firms will be doing better, which is something that we're going to explore in this particular set of slides. So an exchange rate is one currency expressed in terms of another. For example, one euro 12 cents to the dollar or one pound uh, equals 89 euro, uh, cents or whatever. Um, determined by the markets, um, by and large by speculators, government does not try to interfere in this market. It can do, but it doesn't do. Chinese government does. Chinese government has been accused by President Trump of being a currency manipulator. It's true, they do. They try to hold their price low, their currency low. So they try to have a weak currency for reasons that we're going to get into a little bit later. Um, so, so the price is determined by speculators. The amount of money that speculators spend and buy every single day is absolutely astronomical. You're looking at perhaps four or five trillion dollars, which is far more than the world produces every single day and far, far more than, uh, than is traded every single day. Um, which means that there can be huge amounts of money going into a particular currency or away from a currency and that's going to have a big impact on its price and that can happen very quickly. That creates uncertainty for firms. Firms can do nothing about these exchange rate changes at all, but they will be affected by them. And that means that on the foreign exchange markets, on the, sorry, on the foreign export markets, firms might be slightly more cautious than they would otherwise be. So let's take a look at some of these exchange rate moves uh, that we were talking about on the previous um, slide. Um, pick up on the left hand diagram. So focus on the left hand diagram and pick up from round about 2001 when the value of the pound was round about $1.41. And you can see that between 2001 and round about 2006, the value of the pound appreciated massively to nearly $2.10. That was largely because um, of the boom in the financial markets at that time, Britain being a major financial centre. But then what happened? Um, you can see that very big decrease occurring very quickly. And that was because there was a financial crash in that year. That was the credit crunch and everything to do with that. Um, so you can see really big changes occurring really quickly. If you now focus on the graph on the right hand side, uh, where, where we start with January 2016, can you pick up around about halfway through 2016? Again, a big fall. That started on uh, June the 30th which was the day after the Brexit vote. So it was around about a 14% drop in the currency almost overnight. Again, that's going to have a big impact on firms. If you remember the work we were doing on inflation, there was um, a, an increase in inflation shortly after that. And it was that fall in the exchange rate that caused that increase in inflation. You can then see that the economy uh, sorry, the exchange rate started to recover from around about the back end of 2016. That was because this is the value of the pound against the dollar and Donald Trump had just taken control in America. So um, that's what caused that. And again, there was then a fall largely because of uncertainty over Brexit. So how might this big decrease in the exchange rate that occurred after the Brexit vote affect British exporters? Let's take the example of um, of Nissan UK, which is Britain's largest car manufacturer. Let's imagine that Nissan is selling a car in America for $15,000 at an exchange rate of $1.50 to the pound. That's going to be worth £10,000. But remember that the value of the pound has fallen from $150 down to $120. Really two options that are open to Nissan or something somewhere in between. It could still make the same £10,000 by reducing the price in America from $15,000 to $12,000. Well, depending upon the elasticity of demand, which in this case is likely to be high because the car market is a fiercely competitive market, this 
decrease in the price of uh, of cars is is likely to lead to more sales. Um, alternatively, they could choose to hold at the price at fifteen thousand dollars. Now the point is is that the value of the pound is now one twenty. So that fifteen thousand dollars isn't worth ten thousand pounds. It's worth twelve thousand five hundred pounds. They've got two thousand five hundred pounds of extra profit on every car that they sell. And the price in America hasn't changed, so they aren't going to sell fewer cars in America. So either way, Nissan are likely to do well. A depreciation of the exchange rate is good for British exporters. Have a look at that little uh, sentence down the bottom of your screen, just below spiced whoopie deck. Weaker pound, imports dearer, but exports cheaper. So if that decrease in the exchange rate is good, for Nissan UK when it sells in America. How good is it going to be for Nissan UK if they are competing with foreign firms in the UK market? For example, they could be competing with Chrysler, an American firm. Now imagine that Chrysler is selling a car in the UK for £10,000. That's going to earn them $15,000 in America. But the value of the pound has fallen from 15, from 150 down to 120. Well, the only way they, they can still make their $15,000 is by raising the price to £12,500. OK, so their sales are going to fall. So whose sales are going to rise? Nissan's. So that decrease in the exchange rate is not only good for Nissan on the foreign uh, on the foreign markets. It's also going to be good for Nissan in the UK. So in other words, a weak pound is actually good for British firms. And that's why I don't want it to get confused. Uh, by, by by that phrase um, strong strong is not good for British exporters um, if you want a little bit of counterbalance it does mean of course that the components that go into uh, Nissan cars will be will be more expensive but most of a car is not the component so again down the bottom there whoopee deck weaker pound imports dearer exports cheaper so by and large a fall in the exchange rate is good for British firms, it's good for employment, it's good for. Let's take a look at that exchange rate drop for some other firms. Uh, first of all, let's look at Hotel Chocolat, uh, founded 1993, very dependent upon the UK market. 98% of their sales are in the UK, unlike Nissan. They're a luxury chocolate manufacturer and they need cocoa beans. Now, the problem is you can't produce cocoa beans in Britain. There aren't that many cocoa plantations in Leighton the last time I looked. Um, so they're going to have to import them. Um, Whoopi Deck imports dearer. So the price of the cocoa beans that are going to be importing for their chocolate is going to be dearer. But if we take a look at their financial position, they sell about £130 million pounds worth of goods every year. But that gross profit margin, 66% is massive. Most of the money that they make is not cocoa beans. It's other stuff. It, and it's, it's not any form of, of raw material. It's the other expenses and of course profit on top of that. So will this exchange rate drop be good, bad or indifferent for Hotel Chocolat? Well, it's not going to be good and it's not going to be indifferent. It's going to be bad, but it's going to be very bad because most of their imports, most of their costs are not imported cocoa beans. Now we'll take a look at Tesco, which has been around for just over a hundred years. Like Hotel Chocolat, they are very dependent upon British sales. But whereas Hotel Chocolat have roughly 2% of their sales abroad, with Tesco it's around about 20%, so they are slightly uh, less vulnerable to changes in the UK market. Um, the thing about Tesco is that much of what they sell comes from abroad, not everything, but, but a fair bit of what they sell um, comes from abroad. Um, if we look at their financial position, again, you can see a contrast with Hotel Chocolat. Sales of 64 billion, but have a look at their gross profit margin, 6.5%. Remember, with Hotel Chocolat, it was 66%. So that means Tesco have not got a lot of margin to play with uh, if, say, the price of their raw materials goes up. And that's exactly what is going to happen if we get if we get this decrease in the value of the pound. So an exchange rate drop is not going to be good for Tesco, and it could actually hit quite heavily into their already low 
profit margin. So Tesco are going to be much more badly hit than Hotel Chocolat. And that, you remember, is how you get your application marks. So we've taken three studies. Now, all of them, uh, there's going to be some benefits and some costs. In the case of Nissan, the benefits far outweigh the costs. Um, in the case of Hotel Chocolat, there's going to be costs. There aren't going to be that many benefits because there's only about one fifth of the, uh, one fiftieth of their goods that they sell abroad. They're going to be, they're going to be affected negatively, but not particularly negatively affected. Positive side for Tesco is that one fifth of their sales take place abroad. The negative side is that four fifths don't, and they aren't making huge profit margins in the UK. So basically, that is where you're going to get your argument. That's where you're going to get your counterbalance, and that's where you're going to get your conclusion from.